What's up amigos, today we're doing a special Duke Dragon deck profile and in premium we have some cool interactions that I'll cover really briefly as well. The Spectral Duke cards actually utilize kind of like an old concept called a ride chain mechanic. This essentially lets you ride up to grade ones, two, and three consistently with specific cards. As a payoff, Spectral Duke Dragon is a re-standard that uses rigors as retirement as cost. And then also if you're four more damage, we'll get an additional drive check for a total of five drive checks. The grade two and the grade one are able to provide resources in the forms of counter charge, power, and of course, a field to retire. Not only that, it has access to Spectral Dupe Reverse, which is essentially gives you a third Vanguard attack when you're five damage or more. You can also use this on stride turns to actually maximize on the strides and potentially catch your opponent off guard too. Starting with the Ride Chain cards, you can play any starter technically. I like the Vortimer art. You just want a V-series card so you can get the tickets, draw in two cards. You could also play the original Vortimer Grade Zero to potentially do a check top seven as well. And you still technically can use Harmonics to get the other quick shield. You just want to get the 5k ticket shield. So pros and cons. Moving up to the grade ones, you want to play this one specifically because it does check top seven for the grade two or the spectral Duke dragon and add it to your hand and shuffling. So this rewards you for writing it. But when it's retired, you can actually beef up your Vanguard for the rest of your turn essentially as well. The grade two is phenomenal because it becomes a 10k body, assuming that you do have the grade one in soul. And when it's retired, you get the counter charge. We actually do use other counter charges in this deck, which I'll highlight why later on. But this is also nice during that retirement turn based. One of the most impactful skills for this card is that when you ride the grade three on top of it, you can check the top five and call two cards. And with those two cards, you could essentially activate Unite for free. So it puts Spear Axe Dragon instantly live without you committing any additional cards except just for riding to grade three. And not only that, if you do Excel two, you'll draw an extra card on top of it as well. You could also do this if you're going immediately into stride as well for potentially more effects, especially such as like Percival or any other counter charges such as Dindrain as well to go off before you even do anything further in your turn. Four copies of Spectral Duke because you want to maximize and see this card. It's also rewarding if you're Excel 2 and keep writing, you'll generate more circles, but you'll keep drawing cards in the process too. We do play Ultima in this build, so having maximum copies just makes that a little bit easier too to go into it. And again, you'll also get an additional crit and it becomes 13k base if you have the grade two in Sol. There's actually multiple ways of getting those grade ones and grade twos into Sol because this card checks it on Vanguard, but the grade two can also check on Rearguard. So you have a 10k body as a grade two as well. Two copies of Reverse Duke Dragon, essentially. And so again, this gives you the extra attack. I felt like with two, you get a chance to see it enough to potentially pop that off in the late game. Don't expect this to always pop this off in every single game. Sometimes you just fall back to your strides and that's how you win games. See this as a win more card, essentially. You could also try out Bracing Angel Ladder in place of this or maybe do a 1-1 ratio and see what you like at, be at best. And of course, the Percival package. And so in premium, we're able to use maximized copies of Percival. This gets you an additional circle. And this is even more important with Spectral Duke because you are limited to generating up to two essentially on your first grade three turn, essentially. This isn't like Grigorit where you go into Campbell and you generate up to three as a max at that point immediately, right? So you kind of have to compensate for that. But at the same time, this helps with like Spear X turns to be a little bit better too. So if you do go first, writing up in that sense can still be rewarding. We're playing three copies of Agavale. So this card is a good beater. This also generates Sol, which this card, which this deck uses, especially with your counter chargers. And essentially this is the one way that you can also put other rigors into Sol, specifically the grade one and the grade two Vortimer. So that way your other effects are live in case you didn't have them in the Sol to begin with. Sometimes you may even Sol Blast your entire Sol and then now you need to find ways to put it back essentially onto the counter charging engine that we do play. So we are playing four then drains. This card is phenomenal on play. So bless one, you either draw a card or you can counter charge and give it 3k for the end of turn. So 10k booster in a sense, most of the time you are counter charging because you're going to keep extending or also like just use it in the same turn. Some effects use a counter blast, especially if your rear guards are in tandem with your Vanguard. And also if you plan to do your dupe turn, you want to make sure that you not only are five damage, but you have enough counter blast to fully go off in case it does come up. In addition, we are playing the Maligant because I noticed that you are accumulating soul, so you have enough room to be able to soul blast two to counter charge two immediately. This is on play, so you can place this from hand as well. It doesn't have to be superior call, just like, you know, Dendron has a limitation. It does have to be called. And you may be asking yourself, but you're already playing the grade two Vortimer. Isn't this enough counter charging already on top of that? 
The grade two ornament will only counter charge if it is retired by Spectral Duke's ability, essentially. Everything else in Gold Paladin does not really retire as cost. It's more of like the Shadow Paladin aesthetic that was put into the show because of Ren. So you still need counter chargers that don't rely on that retirement mechanic. And so that's why these generic counter chargers are still definitely mandatory. Feel free to try it out yourself and see if you want to reduce some numbers and see what you like. For more of the consistency package, we are playing the V promo. This helps a ton with this deck. It makes it even more rewarding and more consistent on going up to the grade one, two and three, essentially, because they, they kind of search for themselves in a way, right? But this search for the grade two and less. So that way you have more chances to properly ride up in those games, essentially. And also it could be another way to get like other utility cards that you may need, such as like Sanctitude or even like Garbodoc, Agaveil and and others, right? The on attack skill is also just as important too. So this calls two rearguards, assuming your opponent's a grade three or greater at that point. Since you are retiring rearguards, you also need rearguards for spectral dupe to lock as well. So you can do this later on after you kind of clear a column essentially, and then this can replace that column. So that way you have enough rearguards to still do multi-attack, but also be able to lock moving forward too. This also helps with your stride turns, such as the restander as well, and also Ultima turns too, if you want to make those nutty even more so. Just a great card overall. Two Garber Ducks, so this is just more consistency in getting the Spectral Dukes, the dupes as well. This is a way to kind of fish for them too, so that way you have a more likelihood to like just have one in hand. And especially if your opponent sees that you just grab one, they have to kind of like be aware that you can just pop off with the third Vanguard attack out of nowhere. That doesn't even count of like the front row that it accumulates with circles too. Also keep in mind that when dupe rides, there's another Excel circle generated. So if you have another like superior caller still to pop off, you can still like use those circles essentially to get the best for your buck as well. So that's why just searching for the grade threes is impactful. You can get the grade three heals as well. This also searches for Duke copy so you can ultimate stride, which is super helpful. And this is kind of like your backup ride compared to the grade one Vortimer to worst case scenario. Sanctitude, of course, you want to survive and this is just metagame that really just thrives on it. It's also an order that you can use against the Shurinori matchup too, etc. Onto the triggers, we are playing the four grade three heals. Uh, they're grade three, so they count as pitch fodder, survival in the early game too. Not much to say. They're also 10k bodies too, so if you do call them from like rear guard effects, essentially, they get at least hit if they're on XL2 circle or if they already still on grade two, these can hit as well. Your crits, you want to make sure you're striding. So you want to keep rewriting Duke. So you need other stride fodder. You want to keep dupe just in case when you go off. And Percival wants to be called anyway. So you do need some stride fodder in the terms of the strike crits. We have the one that goes into so generically. This is even more important too, because you may go to the turn where you stay on Spectral Duke to do that restanding turn. And if you are GB1, you can at least use these crits to make your Spectral Duke even stronger during those battles. And so you can really utilize that, especially if you're trying to retire the grade one to accumulate even more power. And then depending on the triggers that you get, it makes the, your Vanguard a little more scarier in a sense too. We have the Gurgoet crits. These don't go into Soul as often in this build because again, you're not on Gurgoet and you don't go into the Stride as often too. So these are more just like they're crit, but also that if you do damage them, you get a draw. So that helps a little bit with the draw power that the deck can benefit from. And then lastly, with the draws, like I mentioned, you need some PG still. Why not the draw PGs? And so this helps you survive. You can also use Slay Me to call this from the deck and also Perfect Guard from the deck. This is the only way to do that. You cannot do that with Sanctitude because Sanctitude is a Blitz order. <laughs> Just quick tip. So that's why I still play the draw PGs. Also, a quick plug, if you need some help with tournament preparation or even just this deck as well, or, or even Grigor it, happy to help out with one-on-one -on -one coaching on Metafy as well. Check out the testimonials for other student successes and also how they help them as well. Just happy to help out where I can. One copy of our harmonics. Again, you want the ticket shield just in case for the Lane or matchup as well. One Campbell just in case you're like CBD night and then you really don't have much going on. This is guaranteed to go off anyway. The only thing that you don't have to play the second copy because you don't play Gurgoet, so that doesn't matter. So you could still benefit just from playing one as a backup backup, essentially. Two copies of Spear X. This is a phenomenal card going first too. As long as you have two counter blasts, you can do that. And also you can use like Thin Drain to counter charge or even Maligan to get your counter charge back. So that way when you use Superior Call Mod cards, you could potentially activate them such as like Percival and continue to like really expand your turn as well. Two restanders because such a solid stride that we can go fall back to essentially until we're really to to go ham essentially. You could also restand with this and then also pop off with special dupe to get that third Vanguard attack as well. You just have to play around with your rearguards again as well. Glory is raining, such a good card, so you're able to call more rearguards during the battle phase too. 
by returning to and then also this gets you some soul in this in the process too but it really doesn't matter it's just more attack extension especially once you have more cards face up in the g-zone too so Gurga helios just in case it has a guard restriction that could come up but it's a card that we don't go into often so you could play other cards if you want to as well the one bombardment it's kind of like it's free as well and if you have regrets to work with you can actually just be able to get crit call more extend more attacks you know see if this is fit this is also a great card along with the restander as well to be against mega colony too you may not be able to call from the deck but you can still superior call from your hand and so you can still be able to do three turns essentially to get past Rogadoros <laughs> essentially the one ultima like i said we do play ultima so we're not playing the ot and so it's just a good kill turn especially if you have multiple excel circles which means all those front row units will get ultima's benefit and if you stack two crits they're all going to get at least 20k with two more crits so having plus three crit columns that your opponent has to guard pretty much every attack essentially to slay me slay me as phenomenal just get more shield essentially you can also potentially get a perfect guard in the process and two of the sanctified dragon this card lets you kind of like use that soul that sometimes builds up essentially in some games and then gets you another card in the process so you can dig deeper but also survive against tough matchups too so i definitely play two copies so that's the deck profile i just wanted to do a quick one with spectral duke this is something that i just play for fun it's more a casual deck if you were to ask me, like, would you take Gurgowit or Spectral Duke to like a regional? More than likely, I will lean more in Gurgowit. Gurgowit's a little more flexible. Plus, you just maximize so much on that Campbell turn. <laughs> it's not even funny. It's not even ridiculous. It's so ridiculous, right? But this still has access to Spear X. Like every Gold Paladin deck still has access to Spear X. But you still need that 2 CB, which now in this today's metagame, like cards like the history collection errata so they're, they're just free you just benefit from it so i think that's the one thing that gurgo it has over spectral duke otherwise than the nostalgia also being able to have some ride chain concept that you like about the deck too also you have access to another restander too as a vanguard potentially a third vanguard attack too so it's really what you cater and what you have preference but overall it's still a fun deck and what's really cool, you can really just get both decks essentially because most of the cards that they use are generic anyway. So you can go bit between the two if you want to as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments too. Love to hear it. Love to engage the community as well. Do you like this deck? Or are you considering to play yourself or even just like Gold Paladin in general? There's so many variants that you can still experiment to as well in premium. And also, if you want to support the channel, use the affiliate links such as TCG Player, Training Card Mint, 50 Card Shop, Card Trader Zero. And also increase your anime swag with Dueling Guards phenomenal products such as binders, deck boxes, sleeves, and playmats. On to the next one, amigos.